and welcome to my channel. I'm Kristen and today I am doing 10 Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs. These are brand new. I don't think I've ever done a Halloween video on my channel so this is gonna be kind of fun. So the first thing I did was I painted a thrifted frame black and then I got this webbing or this spider web from Dollar General. It was only a dollar and then a ton of items actually came from Dollar Tree. This skeleton did and his body was not moving honestly the way that I wanted it to and so I just kind of had to keep hot gluing it. I thought this leg would look good up here although it kind of looks a little awkward. I kind of tried to hide that just a little bit. I found this really cute uh, steak sign from Dollar Tree as well and I just thought that this needed just some color so I went ahead and took it off the steak and just hot glued it right to this side of the sign at the top and I just decided to add some embellishments to this nothing super crazy I just kind of went insane with this spider web it's actually pretty fun to use and like I said I've never really done Halloween so I didn't know how actually fun and cute uh, Halloween crafts can actually be. And then I picked up some bats and some spiders from Dollar Tree. And then I'm just sticking them inside the webbing and it actually fit and they're not moving. So it actually worked out pretty well. And then you can just rearrange this to however you like. So if you have any of these frames laying around, because I feel like that everyone buys frames you have something laying around where you could make a really cute door sign with this and I love it. I think this turned out great and the frame was only a quarter from a yard sale a year or so ago. So I feel like that I made out and made this project for like under five bucks. is also sponsored by in Tina. They sent me their Tina 2S 3D printer. I was really excited to receive this. It is a desktop 3D printer. It's small, but it is powerful and it's ready to use right out of the box. The only thing that you have to do is turn it on with this little button right here and add the filament to the side, which is right here. And then you are ready to go. You do have to download an app and it has automatic leveling and heated platform. It has a massive model library. So when you download the app, there's already a ton of items that you that is ready to print for you. So I thought this ghost keychain would be really cute and especially since I am making some Halloween decor I thought that it would it'd be awesome. This one did take about a half hour to print so I didn't think that that was a ton of time estimated 27 minutes. I think it was about 29 so at least the estimation is pretty spot on. There is step-by-step -step instructions and they were easy to follow along from setting my phone up to the Wi-Fi to their 3D printer all the things like it was just super, super easy. My daughter did help me a little bit because I just wasn't sure how a 3D printer actually worked. But once we got it going, I was like, this is probably the easiest machine I have ever used in my life. And I have all kinds of machines and this one, it just took a few minutes to figure it out. So this is what it looks like when it is working. It is super quiet. So nothing is interrupted with your day-to-day -day tasks, which I really like that, that this can be going and we can be watching a movie Why this is right next to the TV. So right now my phone is hooked up to this. I thought this would be the easiest way just to download an app and I can print right from my phone. But if you don't want to use your phone, uh, you can print via the app, which is what I'm using USB or a uh, Wii Builder, which is a slicing software. So you have to download that on your computer and it does work for iOS and Windows software. So if you guys do want to check out the Tina 2S 3D printer, I will link it in the description box below for you guys. But of course, I could not just make something with this 3D printer and not use it as a craft. So I picked this little cutting board up from Dollar General. It was only a dollar and I just went ahead and painted the backside of this with some black chalk paint. Once that was done, I did add a vinyl decal using my Cricut machine and then I decided to cut off that top of the ghost. So I I didn't really want to use it as a keychain. It was really cute 
cute, but I thought it would look even better on this cute little cutting board. So my little vinyl decal says boo, and this is right in Cricut Design Space. And then I just hot glued that little ghost to the top here. And then I decided just to sand it down the edges a little bit. I thought about adding some twine or just a, something else, maybe a bow, but I honestly, I just liked the way that this looked kind of plain and it was super cute and it's definitely going to go in a tear tray. Now I just have to create some different Halloween DIYs so I can have a full tear tray for Halloween, but I think this is so cute. to make just one more thing for this video using the 3d printer because once I got started I could not stop so this one did take a little over four hours so I was kind of spent after about five to six hours using the 3d printer but you can walk away from it and like I said, it's no big deal, but this is what I decided to make this skull candle holder. And now it is small. So you would have to make some really tiny candles. I didn't have any wicks that small. So I decided to create something else with it. So this little plate comes right off. So you're able to pull the skull off. You can kind of bend it just a little bit and it is magnetic. So I did have trouble with this. And my daughter did teach me that if you just use a scraper, it just kind of slides right off. So that was like probably the only issue that I had going on with this. So I don't think that was too bad. I really love all the detail on this. So I did just want to get a good close up of it. I think it just looks so cool. And like I said, I'm pretty excited to be doing Halloween decor this year. I don't know what it is, but Halloween decor just has like a different type of vibe. Also kind of reminds me of like Christmas, how you get so excited to make like cute stuff. Like I know Halloween's not cute, but it's pretty fun. So I did have this jar from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to paint the lid black. And then I went ahead and painted this little skull black too, which is cool because you can actually paint these 3D printing items and I, and it works good. I only had to do one coat of this. So I thought that was pretty awesome that I didn't have to do more than one coat for this. So once that was done, I did wait for them to dry. And then while I was waiting, I figured I might as well go ahead and create some stuff to stick inside the jar. My first thought was adding some candy to this and I'm like, okay, that's not as fun as making something else. So I did have some of these leftover bones from some of the wreath and crafting projects that I did, which will be later on in this video. So you'll see the rest of them used up, but I really like just using everything I have. I won't be creating a ton of Halloween decor. So I did just want to make sure whatever I bought, I used. So I did kind of dry brush them with some truffle chalk paint and I just end up sticking the bones inside with this moss which is also from the Dollar Tree of course and then I just shoved it until it was full and then I wanted to keep a couple bones out so I could use them later on and some of these were breaking and I'm like that looks kind of cool uh, with them broken as well so after everything was dry I went ahead and glued that skull right to the top of this jar and then now I'm just adding a bunch of moss to this and of course some of those little bones I liked that they were dry brush brown because it just kind of makes them look like they have been buried in the dirt forever. It, I mean, I probably didn't have to, to explain that one, but moss, bones, skulls. I think this is such a cool touch to some Halloween decor. I have seen these ghosts with the cones and the foam balls for as long as I can remember on Instagram, on TikTok, on Pinterest, all the things, but I seen these little ghosts already made and put together from Dollar Tree. So the only thing I did was just cut the legs off, bought some of these foam cones from Dollar Tree. I used some skewers or you could use dowels, whatever you choose. And I just stuck them in the bottom of the ghost and the cone and it was all done and good to go. You didn't have to buy anything extra. I did notice that these ghosts, uh, they're not all the same because I noticed that like my eye was kind of messed up in one of them, but I did just end up making two and this 
seriously took like two minutes to put together. I had my hot glue gun ready just in case. I didn't even need it. I figured the skewers were good enough and these are the cutest things and you didn't need to buy felt or the hats or bows or anything like that. It is all put together and good. So just remember, check out the ghost eyes because they're not all the same. For this one, I'm just using this large thrifted bowl and I just grab some dirt from outside and then I am going and adding this floral moss and you just seen me use the rest of it or almost the rest of it in the last DIY. Now, these skeleton tongs are from Dollar General, a dollar a piece or a dollar for two and you did have to cut these down or at least I had to for this project. So you're going to see later on that they are cut down just a little bit this wooden tombstone this came from a yard sale it was like a fill your bag type thing for three bucks so i probably have 10 of these because i was just seriously filling up a bag full of a ton of random items but that yard sale had a ton of target items and this was normally from target for three dollars so i feel like that i really made out by buying a ton of these at the yard sale and obviously i helped them out clear their i helped them clear their home out I did uh, paint it with the color Elephant by Waverly Chalk Paint, and then I went ahead and dry brushed it with the color Truffle. And I am also using the color Truffle on these hands as well because we gotta make them look like they are coming out of the dirt. That's, I mean, it's kind of the whole purpose of cutting them down is I'm gonna be sticking them in the dirt and just like making a really cute piece. I think this one is going to end up going outside somewhere, although I don't want it ruined because it is actually, it's actually the cutest, it's not cute. I like saying cute, but it's really not cute. It's Halloween decor. Halloween decor is not cute. And then I just glued some moss to some of the hands and to this tombstone, although it probably wasn't necessary since I'm going to be sticking this tombstone on top of the moss anyways. But just in case, I wanted to go ahead and do that. And then now I'm just testing it out to make sure it all fits and works. And I am ended up using three of these skeleton hands it might have made more sense to just use two to look like an actual body was coming out but I mean why not add the third like Halloween's supposed to be creepy so there you go RIP on here I didn't add anything else to the top because that little area was so tiny and I just used my Cricut typed in RIP and this is like probably the fifth or sixth one that popped up on my computer screen so I just went ahead and added that added it to the glass bowl and there you have it <laughs> this was super fun to make a quick one I'm using this wooden ghost from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a good coat of white paint maybe this will look cool different color but I mean a ghost is white right so I figured that we might as well go ahead and do that I kind of thought about making it galvanized or something I thought that would be cool and I really haven't done any type of faux galvanized items in a long time but I know we kept it easy and went with white going to be using this stake. This was from the first DIY. I ripped the sign off and of course we have to use the stake and I'm just going to be painting that black and then I got these really cool metal words from Dollar Tree as well and they were obviously a pain to get out but once I got them out I decided to go ahead and paint that black as well and it did need a couple coats since it is galvanized but uh, I liked it black way better so you could see it really you could see it just a lot better than if it was just that galvanized color. Once everything was dry, I just went ahead and assembled it. I am just using hot glue, but you could use whatever you choose. I just put this ghost right on the top of the stake. And then I did end up adding a bow to this. It just looks so plain and I didn't really know what else to add to a ghost. So I thought this worked just fine. I am just gluing the beware right to the center. And then I did end up adding some of this like baker's twine. This is from Christmas, but I thought this worked. It is black and white, so I thought it would look just fine but I wanted it to look like he was kind of holding a sign up. So I did just add a piece to each side and I just taped it uh, on the behind the hands and no glue, no nothing. It just kind of taped it. I did end up adding some hot glue to the fronts just so it would hold a little bit better. 
and still kind of felt that it was missing something. So I just used my little chip brush. I got mine from Dixie Belle, but honestly, I think they all probably work the exact same. And then I am just dry brushing with some black paint around some of the edges. And I just think this makes it pop just a little bit more, but I love the way that this turned out. And I think it is adorable in my little pot of weeds. Yes, I know those are weeds, but I kind of just wanted to see what they look like if I grew them all in the pot. So that's kind of why they're still there. It's weird seeing spring florals, but you know, I have yet to get any moss which I probably won't until the end of September. But overall, I think this is adorable. All right, I don't know why I don't make wreaths more often because I think they are so fun to make. So I just had some or a roll or part of a roll of burlap, which I love doing to this. This is a larger wreath form. I want to say it's 18 inches from Dollar Tree. And I'm just wrapping the entire thing in burlap. I just use this to cover and have a good base to glue items onto. So I think this works and I'm just adding some hot glue to the end just to secure it all together. So I just wrapped it and then I ended up spray painting it black. So I found this really cute wreath ghost and here's me realizing that it is in two pieces. So if you have not bought this, it is in two pieces. You do have to add some sort of sign to the center of it. So I'm trying to figure out how I was going to go about putting this all together. So I did end up cutting the strings from the bottom of the ghost and I did keep the ones from the top because it did fit and work around the wreath. So I figured why not? We're just going to go ahead and make sure that that stays together and it did end up working this way so much better. So if you're going to use this 18 inch wreath form, just keep that in mind that uh, if you probably would like glue the top of the ghost head on, it would just, it might, one, it might look kind of weird and two, I don't think that it would, um, you'd have to have like a really big sign to hold the top and the bottom together without making it look super weird. I did just glue the bottom of the ghost eventually to this. I had a wood piece from Dollar Tree. So I painted it black, added this galvanized spooky to the center as my sign for the ghost because it has no middle. It needs a middle. So this is my, this is my middle. So I did go ahead and just hot glue everything. Now, if you want to reinforce it with something a little bit stronger, by all means, but I think that this worked just fine. I really don't think this is going to fall apart at all. And it is on a door that we use all the time. And then once that is all put together, I ended up using some of this spider web. Is it just spider web? I feel like that it has some sort of other name to it, but obviously not. And then I am just moving this all along and stretching it around. I thought I was going to leave the top plain. So you are going to see that through this video, I did leave it plain. I ended up wrapping it because it just looked so weird and it didn't look right. Uh, but I'm just glad that I painted the burlap black and added this spider up. I think this is just super fun. I had some leftover spiders that I used and then some of these bats. And then you can really just add whatever kind of embellishments you want to this. I grabbed some pumpkin picks that I ended up not using for this video, but I did end up adding some of those bones that you've already seen me use. They are sparkly, but I don't think it matters. It doesn't, um, give off a ton of like glitter. So I think it is 100% okay. And I just glued those all around until I thought that the wreath was full enough. I am just using a garden stake I actually used in my garden. This is actually from Dollar General though, and it was only a dollar. I love picking up these wooden stakes. There's so many different projects you can do with them, especially because they're wood and they're only a dollar. But I'm going to go ahead and paint this black. And then I found this really cool like outdoor hanging skeleton. It was only a dollar 25 and there was a few different ones to choose from. I just pulled this apart and realized it had arms and I thought that was even better because I didn't even know I had hands and arms. So I thought that was super cool. And then I ended up just gluing it from the head to the top of the stake. And that's it. I thought this one was super easy and it didn't take very long to put together. Added some spider web webbing because why not? And that is it. You have a really cute outdoor piece. guys that is it for the 10 halloween dollar tree diys if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel i would love if you consider stick around and subscribe also don't forget to check out antina so if you're in the market for a desktop 3d printer it is absolutely great but that is it you guys i will see you in the next one bye